Well, g'day everyone. Welcome to the flight of your life. This is Captain Gab, and we are playing Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It just got released yesterday, and I purchased it at about 10.30 p.m. I actually thought it was coming out at midnight. I was wrong. It came out at 9 p.m. So I purchased it at 10.30 p.m. I got the premium deluxe version, and it finished downloading overnight. I left my laptop on all night long, and here we are. Here's some of just the beautiful opening sceneries to this really, really cool flight simulation game. And I'm going to say game because it does resemble somewhat of an arcade game where you have to insert a few quarters or dollars to start playing. Press any key to start. Here's a nice shot of a TBM 500 just departing out of San Francisco Airport. One of my most favorite airports in the world and one that I fly to quite frequently on a day-to-day -day basis in my job. Yes, I am a real pilot. If you did not know, I fly for a regional carrier here in the United States of America flying the CRJ-200. And I thought today I would take myself back and take you with me back to a simpler time when flying was all about taking it slow, flying low, and looking at all the beautiful sights. I'm going to take us to Western Australia, the state in Australia that I got my first job as a flying instructor, but I'm going to take us up north to a beautiful airport called Cape Levique, right up the top of the Dampier Peninsula. This area is full of rich history from early explorers and most importantly the indigenous aboriginals. I spent a good seven or eight months up in this area out of Broome International Airport and I flew for a scenic flight operator named King Leopold Air. And I flew exclusively the Cessna 210, in which they had about five of them from memory. Such a great aircraft, very powerful. Okay, look here. Main menu, we're gonna get a world map, and we're just gonna zoom right in here, take you to right at the top. Right here. Custom, oh, custom. I don't want Lombardina on. Oh, that's interesting. It's showing... Uh... Oh, here we go. Cape Levique. I don't know why it wasn't showing. Okay. So I've had to select it manually, which is a bit funny. Alright. So we're going to fly a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. It's the closest thing to a Cessna 210. Let's change the time of day. Let's do like a, a nice early morning. Typically, depending on like the tides in the area, because this area up here gets the second largest tides in the world, about a 12 meter tide. It's the second largest in the world next to Nova Scotia in Canada. They get about a 15 meter tide, uh, 15 meter high tide. And uh, it does create some stunning effects in the surrounding waters. Uh, we're gonna choose that aircraft, yes. Uh, okay, let's go to Skyhawk. And let's go ahead and click fly and see what happens. Now I haven't played Flight Simulator from Microsoft for a very, very long time. And in fact, they have not released a new one until, as I said yesterday, prior to that, they released Flight Simulator X and I think it was 2009. So it has been such a long time. Such a long time, too long. I've had a tiny bit of a play of it this morning, but I've been a little bit frustrated. There are some things definitely that I don't like. One of the main things is there's no real virtual cockpit to look around as if I was looking out of my own head and the sort of cockpit would track around. It sort of only has snap views that snap to certain locations inside the cockpit. I think it's just gonna take a little bit of time to get used to that. And once I do, I'm gonna really fall in love. Wow, look here. Aha, uh -huh, brings back memories. This is exactly what Cape Levique looks like. 
Um, there are vehicles that travel up and down a dirt road. You need to have a four-wheel drive because it is inaccessible to anything else other than a four-wheel drive. Big trucks like that. I've seen some big trucks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, but not your big um, road trains. They don't really come up this way. Just smaller sort of trucks. All right, we are ready to fly. So just to let you know, immediately to the right hand side would have normally been an area where we would park the aircraft. And there would be, you know, five, six or seven aircraft lined up, mostly from my company, but also from other scenic companies in the area. We would take passengers here after a, a tour known as the Buccaneer Explorer, which was a half day tour, lots of fun. And we'd come here basically to have some nice barramundi lunch, some of the best barramundi you'll ever taste, and also go for a lovely swim in the water close by. Let's get ready and take off. Um, however this goes, this is in uh, by no means any reflection on how I actually fly real aircraft, unless of course you think it's good, then uh, I'll take it out as well. So let's, let's go, let's uh, increase the thrust, increase the power. Alright, I'm going to just get the speed up a little bit before I go max power. We don't want to, to have any chips from stones into the propeller. Alright, slowly advancing the power now. And here we are, we're in full power. 172. At about 60 knots is a good time to rotate and take off. in the air, we are flying. How awesome. There were times where I thought, am I going to be able to make it over these trees? The amount of weight that I used to carry in my plane. <laughs> Alright, let's climb away here. Alright, I don't want to stall the plane. Whoa, nose it over gently. Get the airspeed too low, and you can stall the aircraft. Alright, let's take the flaps up here, get rid of some of that drag. As we get rid of our flaps though, it does decrease our lift. Drags are used for slow, uh, sorry, flaps are used for slow flight when we come into land, so we can have a better view of the ground, but also come in as slow as possible. some great flights up here. Uh, up in this area is a big migration area for the, I think it was the humpback whale. And quite often during the actual migration season, I would see actual, a whole school of humpback whales in there. Here on the left is you might see a dirt path leading into the trees. That's actually the path where I would drive the four wheel drive down to take my passengers down for a swim shortly after they've, they've finished their lunch, you know, about half an hour after, so they don't drown. But beautiful water just, just right here to swim. Very safe. The crocodiles don't tend to come into this area just here. On the other side here of the peninsula, that's a different story. You can definitely have crocs over this side. That's so cool. It just... It just brings back so many cool memories. I had such great flying up here. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up for a landing. So I'm going to start slowing the aircraft down, start getting some flaps out, and then we're going to come back and land on runway 13, which is the runway I typically to land on. The winds were always favouring runway 13, most, most of the time anyway. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. Uh, I will be producing more of these videos because I feel that there is a lot to be uh, 
learn from watching flight simulation and there's a good opportunity for me to teach as well in this more so than I can uh, when I'm flying in my CRJ it's not you're not really allowed to be filming in the uh, passenger jet so you probably notice there's not a lot of content on my channel from within the actual aircraft and uh, for good reason we're, not, we're pretty much not allowed to film there are heavy restrictions on that okay so I'm bringing the throttle back pretty much to idle now I'm just gonna bleed off some speed I want to get my last stage of flaps out now and then I just want to increase my power a little bit I want to be back around 65 knots or so when I come over the threshold to land now there wasn't really an identifiable threshold here at Cape Levique this is known as an ALA an airplane landing area and that they only follow certain guidelines they're not required to have a lot of the stuff that a lot of airports registered airports have so it's a little bit on the dodgy side here we go I'm gonna bring the thrust back to idle now all right and just bring it in just kiss the ground there we go touchdown a bit of break and bring the aircraft to a stop so what we'll do is we would then come out to the right hand side as much as possible and then we would try and bring the aircraft around within the radius oh come on I don't want to get bogged I actually got bogged here once my aircraft dug into the sand and got bogged I was actually within like the gable markers the cones which delineate between the uh surface you can't taxi on and the surface you can I was within that but my plane still got bogged yeah funny story it took some time to get it out and I actually had to have my passengers help me to push the aircraft it was not a good day but everyone earned their barramundi lunch that's for sure and a good swim after so we're taxiing back here I'm gonna get all the flaps up now back to idle. It looks like there's a bus going absolutely crazy up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, oh no, stop it. What's going on? I'm not supposed to do that. Well, anyway, I reckon that's good enough. Like I said, I'm still getting the hang of this. Those trucks are stuck. It seems when I brake, every time I brake the window uh, the view snaps to a certain position so I've got a few little things to iron out here but I'll just park the aircraft just in this little spot here there we go set the parking brake oh, and let's go back in the cockpit see if we can't shut this down I'm just gonna bring the mixture right out there we go turn the avionics master off and that is it guys I hope you have enjoyed the flight if you have, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe as well to see more, that'd be cool as well. If not, I hope to catch you soon on one of my next videos. Take it easy. Bye-bye.